To thee we come, O Lord our God. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, please make an examination of your conscience. For your penance for the next three nights, besides offering your daily prayers, I ask that you take one of the three readings as prescribed by the church for this day to reread and to reflect upon the importance of the Word of God. And now let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. They spoke against God and said, Can God spread a table in the desert? Can he also provide bread, give meat to his people? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to who God is the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, have mercy.
Heavenly Father, through your almighty word, the nations are nourished on us, gathered for the sacrificial meal. By your spirit, entrust to us your sustaining presence. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Eric, will you proclaim the word? A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hands in the land of Egypt as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into the desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them, to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes, like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is gradual. He rained down manna for the people to eat. He gave them the grain of heaven. Men ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Israelites called this food manna. It was like coriander seed, but white, and it tasted like wafers made with honey. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Calphurnium looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, 
but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you may believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. said to them, I am the bread of life. He who, whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel according to John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. This is where it happens. This is the central theme of our liturgy. It is the central theme of our faith. Both the main altar and the sacrificial altar and the altar outside have been consecrated with holy chrism. Holy chrism is an oil that is blessed in holy week. And it is by this oil that all who are baptized into the faith are anointed. Also at the completion and the fulfillment of baptism, which is the sacrament of confirmation, we receive chrism the second time. And the third time that holy chrism is given is when in our church, a male is ordained to the priesthood. The altars are indeed consecrated and they're blessed. For what takes place upon these altars is the offering of the bread and the wine, which becomes for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For the next few weeks, the Gospel will be centered around the discourse of Jesus in chapter 6, who speaks of bread. The altar is more than just the table. As I said, it is consecrated. For on the altar 
we consecrate the bread, which becomes for us the body and blood of Christ. In some religions, the Eucharist takes a lower status. Some call it an ordinance, some call it a representation, some call it a memorial of the Lord's Last Supper. But whenever we come together and we consecrate the bread and the wine, the two elements that have existed for many, many millenniums, for us it is the real presence of Christ. We have above us an eternal light. If you were to go into a church that believes in the real presence of Christ, you will see an eternal light. Why do we have an eternal light? What does it represent? Come on, you're not that bad. What does the eternal light represent? The living presence of Christ. Where do we find the living presence of Christ? The tabernacle. The tabernacle we keep in reserve the Blessed Sacrament. As most of you probably know, reading the bulletin, our dear brother Wayne had a fall and he is recuperating from that fall. I spoke to him on Friday and I spoke to him yesterday. And I said to him, Wayne, after Mass, I would love to come to you and offer you the Blessed Sacrament. Most of you don't know that Wayne is a very faithful servant unto the Lord. He comes every single day that Mass is celebrated and he receives the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So how do I transport the real presence of Christ? It is called a pix. The Blessed Sacrament I don't just shove in my pants pocket or in my, my shirt front, but there is a special receptacle by which we share the body and blood of Christ. I will be seeing Wayne today, I will be seeing George, and later on this afternoon I will be seeing Louise and a dear aunt who I found out had also taken a fall in which she not only broke two ribs, but both femurs. And so, I ask that in your prayers, remember all our brothers and sisters who are sick and ill. So all will be receiving the sacred body and blood of Christ. It is like a miniature ciborium. And it is gold-plated, because we believe that gold is the most precious of all metals. The inside of a chalice, the top of the paten, the inside of the ciborium, all these sacred vessels that carry the sacred body of Christ, we feel should have a special honor. What does the altar represent? Anyone? I can be here until 10 o'clock tonight. What does the altar represent? Jesus Christ. It also, what does it represent? What took place prior to Jesus' arrest? The Last Supper. And it is on the consecrated tables that we consecrate unto the Lord a remembrance. As often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me. 
Why do we cover the altar? What does that represent? Do you remember when Jesus was crucified and he was laid in the tomb? Did they just stick Jesus on a stone? What did they do? Wrap him in cloth. And so, there is usually three altar linens that are put. One for the sanctity of Holy Mass. One to represent the wrap that Jesus' body was placed in, or what is known as the shroud. And the third is what we call a corporal, by which we consecrate the bread and the wine. That also represents the head covering of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As I said, the most important aspect of Holy Mass is the consecration. Think of a house. Before you can put the walls up, before you can paint the walls, what do you need? It starts with an F, foundation. a foundation. We sing that the Lord is the foundation of our faith. And so if you were to take the entire Mass from the opening prayers to the recess, recessorial or the recessional, the, the entire Mass has additions to that foundation. And it is the foundation in which we offer the bread and wine which becomes our faith and our hope. There are times that I have come over to, to the church to celebrate Holy Mass and Wayne is sitting and he is reflecting. If you take the time, you realize that in this sacred building, this is where we find the Lord. We believe that during the consecration that the portal is open in which the spiritual meets the physical, in which the bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Christ. This is our faith. This is our hope. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, knowing that today is quite warm and humid, I chose not to have a theological discourse on the importance but you will find the importance as found in today's reading. The Old Testament, where God provided manna unto the people. Jesus, where he fed the 5,000 and the 4,000. We all talk of the providence of God. And this is one reason that we come to church, is to give God the praise, the honor, and the thanksgiving for providing us with our daily bread. Hopefully every single day you start your prayer by saying the Lord's Prayer. When he was asked to teach others how to pray, one of the lines of the Lord's Prayer is give us this day our daily bread. Daily bread. And so we see God as the provider. We see God as revealed by his son Jesus as the providence by which we are fed not only physically but spiritually amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen may the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore amen I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, nor being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the 
He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yet for all of this, they sinned still more and believed not in his wonders. Jesus as the Lord of all creation. May we rejoice in him 
as we follow and obey his word. And so therefore on this day we join with the voices of angels and archangels along with all the saints in the entire church. And we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests for Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and for all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. May we pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. May we pray for all those who are suffering from COVID and give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and all health care workers. May we pray this day for peace in our world. May we remember in our prayers all abused and neglected children, all abused and neglected animals, and all victims of violence, both here and abroad. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of those who serve in our armed forces and pray that God would return them safe and sound to their families. And may we, Father, remember all who are present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, confessors, and martyrs, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless to accept and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries and with spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that small moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Be pleased, therefore, in remembrance of this Christ your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel. The sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham and that to which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and back to the host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood, of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ the Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. For these souls, Lord, and all the rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ the Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for you. your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, Revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence,
peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May this communion and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it for everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, Though we are unworthy to receive this sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us now offer a prayer, an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul, unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise while I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word of God.
The Israelites ate this manna for 40 years until they came to a settled land. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord our God, you fed your people in the wilderness with manna from heaven and us with the bread of eternal life. Grant us an unwavering trust in you as you are unwavering in your care toward us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Grant that the sacrifice which I, <clears throat> though unworthy, have offered up in the sight of your majesty, be acceptable to you. Through your mercy, may be effective for myself and for all those for whom we have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Lord, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life with the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to love the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word became flesh. He made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love.